Hello there folks, today we're taking a look at the game called Kanagan Valley of the Lakes. It's published by Matagat and the designer is Emmanuel Ornella. So in this game, and there's not much fin to it, you kind of, you are a pioneer and you're exploring land and you're trying to do a lot of set collection eventually. So let's take a look at how the game works. So Kanagan is played over the course of two rounds. And for the first round, you have a certain amount of pieces in front of you, the buildings. And for the second round, you will have a second set of those buildings. And what you basically want to do here, this is a set collection game with a vibe of Carcassonne, in my opinion. But what you're going to do here, you want to collect all those different resources in order to fulfill the objectives. And to get some extra points from the central objective over there, which gives you four points for every four different colored tokens. Now, how the game works, and it's really simple. At the beginning, of course, each one of us will have a tile, let's say it's a free player game, like that, and let's say it's, if it's my turn, I look at my tile and I place the tile, and then of course I must respect the boundaries, I must respect the different landscapes, so I can put the planes to the forest like that. I, I can put it some something like that, for example, or to the water right here. Whenever I place the tile, I also have the possibility of, uh, or not have the possibility, I have to place one of my buildings. And the buildings are warehouse, silo, or a farm. And the difference between them is how much they can influence the territory, how much influence point they give you. So what you do here, for example, if you put the silo, you put it in the center, which means that the silo gives you uh, one influence point to every territory on this tile. So for example, if that will be, let's say, this one, but if I will put this tile right here, if I put my silo here, that means the silo influences the, rock, the mountains, the forest, the plain, and the water. It gives one influence point, one area influence control to each of those areas on that tile. It's really easy. So the uh, this is the warehouse. With the warehouse, it's a bit different. You put it between the two different territories and that means it gives two influence to each of those two territories. So that's really easy. And the farm you put to the specific territory. That means that it gives three influence, but only to that territory. So it's really, let's say, expensive, really, really powerful, really expensive one. As you can see, those tiles have those different resources printed on them. And how do you get them? Really easy. Let's say this was the situation right here. And then it was, let's say, the red put it right here and put maybe a warehouse right here between those two territories, the mountains and the water. So whenever you complete a territory, you close it up, you will see whoever has the most influence in that territory and whoever has the least influence. And then you will share resources on that. So for example, right now, if red has completed this one, and let's see, so red has two influence on the water here, and white one has white has only one influence because of the silo, which means the white has the least. And whoever has the least amount of influence in the completed territory will get to choose one of the three special abilities on those uh, tiles right here on those columns. And this will be changing if you take a tile from that, there will be a new special ability. But those are many different special abilities. For example, with this one you can get a gold card. At the end of the game, whoever has the most of them will get 10 points, second most 5 points and so on. With this one you can get the extra resources. Or let's say here, it doesn't matter if you have the most influence or not, you will be the first one to choose the resources. Get extra so here you can exchange you have to exchange for the same shape of resource but you can change colors of those if you want to you can do it two times and there are very many different 
Um, no, no, here, for example, you discard the tiles or here you just get the resource. There were more of those that deal with the exchange and trading. For example, this one, you must trade two resources or you can do that, of course, and that can be of your benefit. So, whoever has the least will get the bonus. Then, we will take all the resources. So, for example, here we have this fish and those two fishes right here. These are the three resources. So, starting with the player, whoever has the most influence in that territory will get the amount of resources, he can choose the amount of resources based on his influence. So, what that means is that Red has two influence right here, he has the most, so he can choose two resources. So, he will choose maybe these two resources. And then the next player goes. Because here the white is has the least, but he's the next one in the line, then he can get one resource, and there is one resource. But, let's say the white at the least, or let, let's, say, let's say something like that, so there would be this one and let's say i don't know from what wherever although you can put on the on the tile on the starting tile but whatever just just for the showing for for the stuff so for example there is that situation right here where white and yellow has the same amount of influence one one and red has two so red has the most and whoever has completed this tile so red has completed he will be the one to choose who of those two will become the least, or let's say, <laughs> will become the least, will become the last in the order, and that person will get the bonus. And this, the second person will be the second to choose the resources. So in that option, for example, the red chooses yellow to be the second and white to be the third. So, so the red takes those two resources, then it's yellow's turn. He can take one and he has this last one, and that means the white will be without. So sometimes you will get resources, sometimes you might not get resources, and that's how you basically go and whenever you put a tile if you have completed territory you see if you have the most influence the least influence and you share the resources you get bonuses all the different ones and here are the objective cards so and this is the main thing basically these are where the most points come from and the objective cards are just a set collection for example for every hat or is it whatever it is leather you will get three points. For every minor, you will get three points. But there are the bigger ones. For example, for combination of an apple and a farmer, you will get five points. Or let's say here, it gives you seven points. You need to have a combination of, of those three uh, people right here, the fisherman, the miner, and the, I don't know who is, X-Men? Axe, not X-Men. Anyway. <laughs> one who works in the forest um, hunter maybe so um, yeah and all those different objectives but they're really straightforward you just collect those symbols those resources and you get those points the cool part here is though that at the beginning of the game you will have five of those cards you will choose three to keep for the scoring but at the beginning of next round when the round ends when all players have placed all of their buildings and then second round begins with the map already build up somewhat you will just take the pieces from that card over there the leftover pieces and you start playing with them the second round but the cool part is that for the second round you will get some extra objective cards and you can kind of exchange them because you can only score three objective cards at the end of the game but you had three so if you get extra you can still choose the three ones uh, the, those best three out of those new five which means that for example your strategy might have changed so it's good to exchange some objectives as well so and that's how the game works and the end of the game whoever has the most points is the winner and as I told you this um, tile stuff has a lot of different bonuses I'm just gonna show it right here just for example you will get a reward which is you will get the resource just you can choose any color but it must be that shape you get the specific resource, you can add two objective cards and discard two objective cards, so kind of exchange, you get a gold card, you steal or you exchange your resource with another player, you exchange resources from the token pool based on it should be the same color or it should be the same shape, or you steal resources from each player or whatever. So 
And this is a simple game anyway. And of course, as I told you, four points for every four different colors. And that's how Okanagan is played. So let's talk about Okanagan Valley of the Lakes. So I think there can be a comparison with Carcassonne. And when I, I cannot say I don't, didn't like Carcassonne, but Carcassonne is not as exciting for me. Because basically you pull out the tile and sometimes you're unlucky and sometimes whatever you put down and you put your meeples in somewhat somewhere and you get something. Here it, it's kind of the same but it, in a more exciting way in my opinion because it has more of that area control stuff in it. So if I compare it to Carcassonne, I like this one better than Carcassonne. Uh, and I would not play Carcassonne really because I don't care about Carcassonne, I'm sorry. I know it's a classic. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's, let's go to Okanagan because this video is about Okanagan, not Carcassonne. So first of all, I like the quality of the components of the box. So Madagod, yet again, does a good quality, except I don't know why they don't make the cards better. Um, the card stock is, although, although the card stock is fine, I would say it's fine, but maybe linen finish cards, a little bit better quality cards would have been good. I don't know why they keep doing that quality of cards. They did Raptor, which, which are like, they were linen finish, but they were rather thin. But they kind of got towards that better uh, card stock, but who knows? Anyway, uh, everything else is good quality. I like the different shapes of those, the warehouse, the silo, and all the other components are really, really cool. I like the, uh, the tiles and so on. And if we go to the gameplay itself, so as I told you, it reminds me of Carcassonne, but in a better way for me. So right now, the tiles are either the tiles or the special ability, which I like. And there's that balancing out, which you want to talk about, is that balancing out of if you are the one with the least influence, you at least get a special bonus. And special bonuses are really, really cool. And sometimes, um, so if there is a tie between the least or the highest bidder, like, for example, there's only two of you and both of you have one silo, one influence each in that territory, complete territory. So the one who built uh, this territory, he will decide if he will be the last or the first. So, and sometimes, and I have chosen this as well, sometimes I've chosen to be the last in order to get the special bonus instead of getting those uh, resources, instead of scoring, scoring that stuff. Because sometimes you look at those, um, I don't really need those resources here. I'm not really collecting them, but the special ability is really, really cool. I like that, I'm gonna take that instead. And I, I like that. I like the special variety of special abilities as well. There's not much of many of them. Um, iconography is rather clear. I like how special abilities give you opportunity to trade your resources into other resources because you might be stuck with some resources and you didn't get really what you wanted, but you still wanted to complete in order to get some resources. But then you can exchange those with special abilities. So that's really cool. Um, what I also like about this game is that you are building up this map and you can kind of kind of score the small territories but you are kind of thriving striving for for the bigger ones you want to get the bigger territories because then if you put a lot of influence in there you can get a lot of resources from that but it's a risky move if you build too too uh, big of a territory some players might get in the way and maybe screw with you and then eventually you will not build up till the end of the game so who knows that but yeah, it's a straightforward game. It's, it's a gateway game. I would say, in my opinion, maybe gateway plus uh, because of that area control. But I like how it distributes so between two territories or silo uh, influences all the territories on that tile. Or farm is the strongest, but it influences only one territory, one side of the tile. I like that aspect as well. And also... The cool part of that is that at the beginning you will get five objective cards, you discard, um, you will um, keep three, discard the two. Then the second round begins when you get those new pawns, then you will get two more objective cards and out of those you will 
Keep 3 and discard 2, so your strategy might uh, differ from the beginning, because at the beginning you were like, okay, I'm gonna get those 3 cards, I'm gonna collect that, that, that stuff, but eventually it wasn't beneficial, you didn't collect all of that stuff, and then you're like, uh, whatever, then I'm gonna get new objective cards. And I like how uh, one of the special abilities of the tiles is also getting some uh, kind of recycle some objective cards to get new objective cards. This is really cool. So. Uh, overall, I like the building aspect, so you build up the map, you have this area influence, uh, area control type, not control, but uh, yeah, area majority type of stuff. I like how accessible, easy it is, I like that it balances out with the player with the least amount of influence, uh, of course choosing the resources last and most likely not getting any resources, but he will get the special abilities which are cool and not just, you know, Oh, whatever, I got something. No, they are cool. Uh, so, Okanagan, uh, Valley of the Lakes. Uh, it, it Also, by the way, it plays well with any number of players, 2 to 4. Uh, it might last long if you think too much. And you just need to, like, come on. It's like with the Carcassonne as well. Some players just think too much on their tile. They'll look at this tile and, where should I put this tile for 10 minutes? <laughs> This is an easy game, so here as well. So I like all of that. I definitely recommend Okanagan Valley of the Lakes. It will get a bronze Verfil medal from me. So that's how it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take a look at this game and we see you another time. Bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.